we're gonna do something a little bit different today. So I've been needing to do some long needed maintenance on the Lexus. You guys can kind of see that there's a lot of oil and everything. Uh, my Lexus actually leaks a little bit and yeah, it's already dripping on the floor. It's kind of a, it's a deal that's needed to be done. Kind of annoying. I have to do it. But this is something, obviously, you want to keep your maintenance up on your stuff, especially if you want your engines to run. A lot of the reasons that the JZs and stuff actually break is because people don't maintain them. Uh, the one that came out of the green car threw a rod, and it was because there was an oil leak and there was no oil in the pan. So he just continued to drive it, and it eventually just hucked a rod out because of a bearing wear. For those of you that are, you know, I'm assuming there's going to be some of you guys that are following me who are into Jay-Z's or have a big dream to have a turbo car or some sort of boosted Jay-Z, kind of like my Supra, the 240, and you guys are watching to learn about stuff. And I'm also assuming there's probably some of you guys that have never actually tore into your engines before, and I'm going to just go over a real quick deal on how to tear apart the front of the engine because I will be removing the timing and stuff because I'm gonna replace, I'm gonna, I will be replacing the cam seals as well as the crank seal. And I'm just going to go over everything real simple to show you guys what you guys got to do in order to remove this. And then I'll show you guys proper way to time uh, VVTi engines. But this is a very simple procedure. There's a, <laughs> it's about as easy as it can get. Obviously, I just drove this, so I'm probably going to take apart a couple components. And then after a little while, take it the rest of the way apart because I will have to drain the coolant. And since I just drove it, it is hot. This will pop off and then you can access the front half of the engine. The next thing you guys are going to want to do is to remove the radiator as you are kind of in a spot that you can't reach anything. This is where you can just start tearing things apart. Now this is gross. I'm going to be cleaning everything. That is one clean VVTi gear. Now one of the like tall tale sign that you know that it's leaking up top is obviously everything is just gross and wet. My timing belt is not bad. This is actually a new belt. In the back of the gears, it's completely soaked. Also, it's just wet at the top. When you got a leak like that, if it's leaking in the front main, it will just kind of seep down underneath the timing belt and it won't get sloshed up to the top. It'll just be wet at the bottom. And this is just absolutely nasty from top down. Over here, the reason it's wet here is because previous owners missed these. They, they literally missed the hole. Now, one of the biggest things with this, because you have to remove the harmonic balancer, is you have to break the crank bolt loose, which is a 22 millimeter or 7 eighths. You need a hell of a freaking breaker bar, and I use the extension of my jack. Okay, got my tools here, and now because this timing belt has been replaced, obviously the car has 215,000 miles on it. This is not a timing belt on an engine that is a bad. I can show you one on the green car where the belt itself is actually really cracked up and gross. You can see that it's a OEM Toyota and the letters and everything are still vibrant. They're not all wore off and everything. Hopefully because of that, the crank bolt is not a million foot pounds and I can just break it loose, no problem at all. So right at the base of your radiator, now I'm not sure if this is the same on the IS300, I would assume that it is, but on the GS300 there is a little valve, and I got my car jacked up just a hair so I can put a coolant jug underneath here, and I can just recapture all of my coolant and reuse it for whenever I'm going to put it back uh, together later. So this is a really good idea that you guys can use, and also to relieve the pressure in the system. You guys can see just how nasty and crusty everything is. It should be freaking absolutely spotless and clean and smooth and not nasty. Because underneath your car looks like this. You probably got a leak while that's draining down there. Go ahead and grab your pliers so you can remove these spring clamps. You should just slide right off there. No problem at all. After that, you got two 12 millimeter nuts. These are little studs here. Get these guys broke loose. Both sides. You will have little rubber mounts basically to keep the radiator from bouncing back and forth when you hit bumps make sure you guys have these little rubber mounts here they're basically absorbers for any kind of shock that your radiator will go through they also have them on the bottom so they're going to be in the shape of grommets that sit on the feet just basically this is completely encompassed in rubber so that way there's no shock that will break it because typically like all of these, these are all plastic and they do crack. So, and actually for the most part, they don't even break here. They separate between the metal and the plastic. So make sure you guys are keeping an eye out for that. Probably a good idea to just go ahead and take this box off. So that way you're not fighting the radiator, trying to get it out. With the box out of the way, you get sufficient room to be able to work on stuff. Down at the bottom, you will have three connectors. One is a temp sensor and the other two are for the fans. 
They are easy to access, just lay on the ground, and you should be able to reach up and just unplug them. Very simple. They were just press release. You don't have to use any other kind of methods. So to avoid losing a bunch of freaking fluid, I have used vice grips to just kind of uh, pinch the line so that way it doesn't come from the transmission side. And to keep the fluid from completely draining out of the radiator, I do have these little vacuum plugs. You can get these at any parts store. They come in this little deal here. I use these for vacuum plug offs and everything else on like all my race cars and stuff. What I will do is I will just undo the clamps on both of these and then as soon as I get it undone and I'll let it drain into the pan for a second and then I will slide this guy over it so that way we can keep the fluid in there so you don't have to freaking go spend a bunch of money replacing fluid. Once you have those crimped off at the bottom there, you can just go ahead and disconnect your last hose. Radiator comes out. Oh, we can go set this aside now. You guys can see right here on the bottom, I did put the plugs on there so that way fluid doesn't leak out. Set that out of place. And now we have access to the front portion of the engine. You guys can see my, my vice grips clinging onto dear life down there, keeping things in there so it doesn't leak everywhere. I will take you through the way that you can do this uh, with an automatic transmission. Now, the way I was going to show you using that is if you have a five speed, you can put the, you can pull your emergency brake, put it in gear, and then everything will bind together and you can break it loose that way. The other way you will be using your serpentine belt and I actually suggest using like a different one as this will, or could possibly stretch it. But if not, you can use your own and risk it. You, you can just go buy a new one. They're not that expensive. But I will show you the way that you can break that guy loose. All right, so in order to get the belt off, you will use a 14 millimeter socket. You can use whatever you want to use, but you want to have some sort of uh, extension on here so that way you can actually put some pressure on so what you're going to do is you will pull it so basically you'll be tightening you'll tighten it until the tensioner moves and then when the tensioner moves you can see that the belt loosens you will need two hands to do this so when you tighten it and the tensioner loosens you can pull the belt off with your other hand and so once the belt's off, you're basically free to start removing the front portions of the engine. But before you start taking your components off, you want to get yourself your second belt. I'm gonna come over here to my collection. I'm just gonna grab one of these guys. I will get this all set up and I will show you guys what you have to do in order to make this work. Okay, so to explain what I did here, I basically wrapped the serpentine belt and on itself. So you wrap the serpentine belt around the pulley but make sure that the grooves are in and then you just stuff it inside itself, see? So it's stuffed inside itself and then you just pull it to where it's going to pull tension till it gets trapped on uh, another pulley here. And then when it's, bound, when it's bound on itself, you'll have all the pressure that you can have to break this loose. And so with all the tension on it, you should be able to break it loose just like that. Okay, so while it's bound on itself, I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I mean. So I'm gonna undo it here. So you guys can watch the belt unravel itself. You can see that I had the belt shoved in there. You see, it's kind of wrapped around and then it just kind of bent over on itself. So I'll give you guys an example of it. So basically, you got it on the, you got it on the pulley and you shove this end down on itself and it's like this. So then whenever the other end is wrapped around another pulley, you continue to pull until it cannot pull anymore and it just binds on itself. Basically the gist of it. Normally I would use the bolt. You'd have the bolt in there a little ways so uh, you can actually have something to press against. But the little bolt on the long stud on my puller here is actually a lot smaller than the uh, bore inside the crank. So it just bottoms out. Also, the oil has been running down onto this so much that this just is like easily, easily pulling off. So if you guys are as lucky as I am and yours comes off easy like this, or if you've recently, you know, had a timing belt job done, then you should have no problems and this should be, just be a really, really easy job. If you are at the point where it is stuck, you're gonna have to use the bolt or something. You'll just have to um, unbolt your condenser if you still have it and you'll just have to move it out of the way enough to where you can 
access this or just bleed the system off and get this out of the way so you can continue to work. Once the harmonic balancer is off, you will have to remove these assorted bolts here. They'll be in bolts or they'll be studs. If you're lucky, they're studs. It makes it so much easier to put back on. Uh, it'll be just be a couple 10 millimeters. Next thing I want to do is remove this top cover. Uh, I believe they're four and a half millimeter Allens or you can use a 3 16th. 3 16th works fine. It's a little bit loose, but these things should not have very much uh, torque on them anyways. If you can get a, or a long Allen, you can get a long Allen in there and then just break it loose with a little wrench, something that you can uh, grab this with. It won't be an issue. So there's one here one here and there's one over here once you get that off then you can access the three bolts that hold the tensioner on once the tensioner is off then you'll be able to get the rest of the bolts off on the timing cover and then your whole timing come all the timing and everything will be accessible the front cover will come off and holy freaking criminy that is that is disgusting oh my lord it's been a while since i've seen one this gross all right so next thing you want to do You'll, I'm assuming you'll probably already have this guy off. Next thing you want to do is take these, there's three 12 millimeter bolts. There's one there, one there, and one there. I 100% recommend using a magnet. Make sure you have a magnet because if you're putting this back on, I have done it many times. You drop a bolt into the timing and I do not advise trying to leave it there and hoping for the best because it does not work. I promise you it does not work. I've always dropped one at least once. On the 240, I really, I don't even have much of a timing back there. I just have this bottom cover and then I don't have anything else. So I'm able to just reach down there with a the magnet and grab it. Be very careful with those. Obviously you're taking it apart right now. So it doesn't really matter if you drop one because you're gonna grab it later. Very important, always pay attention to those. So for the bottom cover, you'll have a bolt here in the middle. You have a bolt right over here on the bottom of the water pump. You have a bolt at the very, very bottom. And then you'll have a bolt right here, which this one's kind of annoying to get to. And I just kind of broke it off. It doesn't really do much. You can see right there on the edge there, it just broke off and uh, the timing cover is held on pretty well regardless. I only use like two or three bolts for my whole timing cover on like the Supra. As you guys can see, this uh, these seals and stuff make a freaking mess. So the seals I'm talking about are right behind the cam gears, but they're behind this cover. So in order to get to that cover, obviously you got to remove the cam gears and in my case, my my valve cover gaskets are not leaking, so I'm just going to do this with the covers on. I don't want to mess with the stuff on top. If you're going to remove the stuff on top, you're going to have to remove the intake, which you got a few bolts right here on the top that you can remove this whole crossover portion, and then you should be able to access everything on the top. You'll just have to go through and make sure, just remove everything that's in your way. But in this case, I have no issues aside from these ridiculous leaking seals and I will show you the reason why they're leaking whenever we get to that point. But for now, the next thing you're going to want to do is start removing your timing components and for your timing components, all you got is this one little pulley and you got this one roller and then you've got the tensioner and uh, this portion, this thing right here, this whole part, this is all a tensioner section. So you don't need to remove this. You just got to remove this and it uses a 10 millimeter Allen. Once you remove that, it'll slack up on your timing belt and you'll be able to remove the timing belt. You should be good to go. For those of you that don't understand how an interference engine works, I suggest that you guys line up your timing marks with the back. These little markings right here, the little lines, you line these lines up with these little humps on the back of the timing. See these little humps and then the little marks. You line those up on both of them. When you roll this, when you roll the crank around, those will line up with that and then there will be a marking on the crank. So you can get them really close. They don't have to be exact as you do have to remove the bolt again. Once you, once you put it on here and start to rotate the engine, it does get a little tight. But right down here, you guys can see there's this little dot, a little shiny dot right above my finger. And then this little marking, this little marking right here on the crank gear, this little line will line right up with that little dot. And that's how you know it's top dead center. Okay, so for the VVTI gear, and I do kind of suggest doing this with the belt on if uh, you're not taking the covers off, there is a hex style deal on the cam that you can put a big wrench on. But uh, with the timing belt on here, I'm going to use it to bind up so I can get this loose. But what you're going to, there, the way this works is, this is a plug basically, and then the way the gear is held on is on the inside. So I suggest getting one of these. You can get this deal at any parts store. It takes a 14 millimeter to get the front portion off. And then I'm pretty certain that it's a 10 millimeter on the inside. It's been a little bit since I've taken mine off. I never really have an issue, so I don't like actually access this. So it doesn't take much to get this one off. The inside on the other hand, if you're unlucky, you will strip out the hex head 
because it is a freaking hollow head. I don't understand why. And this will leak. Typically I say to take the belt off so you can like bleed out the cam gear. But since I'm going to break this loose real quick with it on still, then I really don't want to do that. So now if I'm lucky, this should just break loose and hopefully it does. Oh man, I don't know if it's going to. Oh no. All right, no big deal. Same thing with the, with the crank bolt. Just uh, put it on a breaker bar. I had to use the jack handle as well. And uh, she came right out, broke loose. There's uh, That's not even a big bolt. I don't understand why it's even that tight. I mean, I guess uh, from age and use and everything, it would make sense, but that's how you get that loose. It's a 10 millimeter on the inside. Now we will remove the timing and then I will show you guys the gear and everything and we can pull off the rear housing, the rear cover, and then we can access the seals. Okay, for this guy down here, just the same thing, 10 millimeter. And when you unbolt this, you will see that all of the timing and everything, all the components will kind of uh, collapse on itself. Now also be very careful, because on the back side of this, there is a washer. And uh, yeah, so the washer is right back here. It is actually stuck to the oil pump. I suggest do not lose, don't do not lose the washer because the washer is actually set up in a way that it rides on the inside here. There's a little bushing on the inside of this tensioner that it rides on. Go ahead and remove the timing belt, set it aside. This gear, oh, you remove the bolt. I put the plug back on because it's full of oil. This gear will literally just pull off. Now I suggest just make sure you set the gear like this so that way you don't leak oil everywhere. And now we're almost to the point where we can access everything. We just gotta break this other one loose. That's just a 17 millimeter. She should just snap right loose. Shouldn't be an issue. Right, guys, final thing, you take your 10 mil, one, two, three, and four, then this will come off and you'll be able to get to your seals. Most important thing ever. And then we will tackle the gear down there, which that thing is kind of annoying. And I will tell you the do's and don'ts with that. It's very important. Okay, so easiest way to get these guys out. I already got this one out. This one's a little bit easier just because you can like access it from inside the cam. But regardless, I take it out the exact same way. So I just kind of stick it right here on the edge and I tap it in with a hammer and you'll bottom out because you will run into the back here. Don't hit it super hard because you don't want to freaking stab a screwdriver all the way into your head. And then you just give it a nice little pry. It doesn't take very much. Very, very simple. Now let me show you guys the reason why, why these go bad. Right here, the way these work right here is a rubber deal. Okay, so on the inside of the rubber, there is a little spring, which I'll show you. It's uh, probably a little bit easier to see here. You can see this little spring. Now this little spring is to keep tension on this, which is all rubber. You can see I can squish this. This is a very, this is what keeps the oil in. So basically pressure is built up in here with oil, pressures on the spring, and in turn presses this oil seal ring tighter against the sealing surface on here. That's what this seals on. That's why you don't want to damage the cam. You want to leave it a nice smooth surface. Now on the old one, you can see this is so old that this is basically turned into plastic. There's no way for this to seal against the gear or against the cam anymore. So basically it's just riding plastic on steel and anything that gets through, the oil will make it through. Same with this one. That's why you want them to be rubber. That's the reason that they leak and they go bad is because this rubber is not even rubber now. It's all of the moisture has been removed from it. It's been dried up, it's gross. You can even see it's cracking right here. This is basically a piece of plastic now. You can see if I, you can, it basically just, it, it sounds like plastic going on. You can see that it's just, it doesn't flex or anything when you're sliding it on. Unlike this one, where you slide it on, when make sure when you put this on, you don't flip the seal inside out. So get it on in a way that it's going to still be proper and make sure you put the open end towards the back. So when you put this on, you can see that the rubber is sealing because it's flexing. So you just wanna tap this in, use the butt of a wrench or use the butt of your ratchet is what I normally do and you just tap it in. Just make sure it's all sealed and seated pretty good. And then the other one is really easy because it just kind of slides in and then the VVTi gear is what seals against it, not the cam itself. Okay guys, so the new seals are in. We will have no more leaks up top. Now to the bottom. Now this is very important, I stress this. Do not just jump straight forward and try to freaking do this without uh, taking the proper procedures first. 
you want to remove this. This right here is what holds the timing belt to the gear. You don't necessarily need it, but it is just a safety caution. But if you try to remove the gear and you know you get too far ahead of yourself, you'll break off the uh, trigger teeth. You do not want to do that. You'll have an instant check engine light and it'll go into limp mode and you'll just misfire. These are what the engine uses to determine where the crank is and it uses the cam sensor up top to determine when it's going to fire the injector and then this to, to fire spark. So this is a 10 millimeter bolt. Take that off, then this will slide off. Okay, so same procedure with the bottom. Tap in a hammer, you can pry it out. This one is still a little bit rubber, but it's nothing like a brand new one. You can tell that this one was replaced a while ago, and it's always good to just go ahead and do them while everything is apart. You don't want to have to do this again later. It would suck to put this back together, and then a thousand miles down the road, you're leaking again. So, also, be careful when you're removing this. You don't want to accidentally break one of these teeth off. If, any of the, if there's any issue with it pulling off, it's probably because of one of these dowels. You want to make sure that these are... Uh, flat or flat enough for it to come in and out so if anything you can tap on one side or the other to make it to where it's level enough to just slide right off sometimes it's not going to be that easy and you're going to have to use a little puller and they do have pullers designed for that where it uses two bolts and then you can just pull it straight out but there we go i'm going to get this all cleaned up guys and then we'll put it back together and uh, she should be good to go no more leaks and we should be all clean all right, nice and clean. I'm gonna remove the tensioner here, which is two bolts. The tensioner sits in here and slides in just like that. You put your bolts back in through the bottom. I use a long extension, it works really, really good. And once you do that, we'll uh, jump up to the next part. I will show you guys exactly what you need to do to put the timing and everything back together. All right, guys, so just go ahead and follow the steps completely backwards at this point to get everything put back on. Get the cam gears and everything put back on. Make sure when you're putting the VBTI gear back on, you are putting it on properly. There is a dowel right here, and then deep on the inside, you can see that there is a spot for the dowel. Make sure it lines up. Now, when you put this on, you should be able to feel it you'll feel it lock on and it will slide all the way into place. And then as for this one, this one's very easy. Just lines up with that dowel and you're almost there. Make sure you get those things nice and tight, nice and snug. And then we will move on to the timing portion of the engine. Very, very simple. Just gotta be tedious. Make sure everything is exactly right or you will be risking the engine's life. Okay, so once everything's back on, make sure you line up the marks and then as well as the bottom. The bottom's not gonna matter so much uh, just because I will show you guys a little trick with that in a moment. Um, and that requires you being off one tooth and then you turn the crank while it's loose on this side. And once the crank lines up, it'll pull completely tight. Everything will be lined up and you'll be able to easily put the tensioner on without an issue. Now, you might have to do this a couple times, but if you look how tight this side is and then you look and see that it's slightly off, as soon as you tighten this, you can see that this side tightened up and that the timing is about spot on. It's only because the top is slightly moved off of their points. So this is 100% good. This is nice and snug over here. And doing that is a very good thing. It's a good way to make sure everything's right. So you don't have to sit there and fight it. So you can nice, nicely pull it tight. And after this, the next step is to put the tensioner on. You're gonna have to finagle it a little bit. Just make sure you don't let the timing belt fall off of the teeth. All right, so the timing components and everything are back on. Make sure that this is, you gotta put, make sure you put this in properly. You will know that there's an issue if you can't even get this in there because there'll be a little bit of slack and the entire point of the tensioner, this is a hydraulic tensioner. Once you pull this pin, it'll eject the little, there will, there's a little rod in here and it'll push up on here and everything will go full, full tight. This should be tight, this should be tight, and this should have a little bit of slack. Before you pull this pin, before you pull this pin, you want to turn this over by hand to make sure that everything is good. And then you turn it over a few times, make sure all of the marks line back up. So that is what we're going to do before we get too far ahead of ourselves. You don't want to pull that pin and just freaking fire it up because if it's not right, you'll be sorry. And already right away, I can already tell that there's compression. The compression of the cylinders are fighting me. That's a really good sign. Just go over a few times. Yep, nice and solid. Mark the lines back up. 
come down low, check it out. Or a little bit off right up top, okay? And you just gotta make sure that everything's good. All my marks and everything line up. She's nice and solid. She is freaking good to go. So from this point on, guys, you go completely backwards from what I showed you. Everything just goes right back together like Legos and you will have a freaking nice sealed up engine. Just like that, she's good to go. Check her for some leaks. She looks good. All freaking ready to rumble for another 200,000 miles. Let's go. That's how you do it, guys. Tear down to freaking put back together. Let's go. I like to do some of these how-to style videos because they're just normally enjoyable. I know that there's a lot of people that don't know what they're doing and I would like to be able to help, so I'm here for that. If you guys enjoyed the video and it helped you, let me know down in the comments below. Please hit the like button and that's gonna be it for this video. I'll catch you guys later. So